Okay, we have sound Mbote Bandeko Mbote Banakongo Bananzambi. Greetings. Salama. I hope you are doing well. First things first, of course, like and share the video. Today we're gonna discuss Mahungu, the mystery of Mahungu, the original man eh, from the Congo Bakongo tradition. Very interesting topic. So make sure to invite some people to join us in this live uh, broadcast. I know you will uh, enjoy the information. Um, hallelujah. So we're going to start by reading from Genesis 1 verse 27. And after that, I will explain the myth or the mystery of Mahungu. Okay, the original man from the tradition of the Bakong. It's very, very interesting. Now, I will try to keep it in 30, 40 minutes. Because it's uh, it can be very long. So I don't want to make a very long video. So I will try to keep it um, between 30, 40 minutes. Ingeta. So... Read along with me, Genesis 1, verse 27, and it reads, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay. Now, when you do a Google search, Adam and Eve, these are the images that pop up okay, in, uh, in Google. And look at this uh, Neanderthal. And so these are the images that will pop up in Google. Uh, you even have Eve and Eve over here. Okay. Adam and Eve. Look at this. These are the image that you see. As if Adam and Eve were European. Crazy. <laughs> Adam and Eve were not Europeans. Okay. These are the images that we are familiar with. These are the images that people know. Right? That people are familiar with. The image of the European Adam and Eve. Okay, now put that in your mind. Now let's read it again. So God is uh, the Hebrew Elohim. So the Elohim created men in his image or their image. And in the image of the Elohim created he or them, him, male and female created he them okay very interesting so we are told that the elohim created men in their image but when they created men in the image we are told uh, in the last here let me highlight it yes in the last sentence male and female created he them now, in Christianity, <clears throat> according to, you know, the Western tradition, we are told that Adam and Eve were two separate created beings. Okay? Yes. And then, I think in let's, chapter 2, yes, I jump to chapter 2. Okay, let's go to chapter 2. Just follow along, okay? I will explain. Then in chapter 2, we are told... Um, is it chapter 2? Hmm. 
Yeah, here. Okay. Yes, in chapter 2, verse 21, we are told, And the Lord God, yes, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from a man, now it's interesting that when he was creating man in chapter 1, Lord God was not mentioned, just God, Elohim, right? But here, Lord God is used. Anyway, he took the rib uh, from man and made a woman, okay? Made a woman. And then in verse 24, we read, And therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one, okay, let's highlight this, they shall be one flesh. <laughs> okay, in Geta. So they shall be one, what? One flesh. Now, the myth of Mahungu is, uh, let me say, the mystery of Mahungu is quite different. Yes, quite different. And to explain everything, uh, we will do a bit of learning. Now, uh, reading, first of all, um, the male and female mentioned in the Bible allude to the nature of Mahungu, the state of completeness. Okay? So, in the Book of Ongo, when Mahungu, when man was created, right? The first original man. Now, I will do you better. I will, I will just read from this document, you know, from... <clears throat> Now, there is a Congo proverb that says, Nzambi is another kind of Muntu. The proverb teaches that the Muntu is created in the similitude of Nzambi. And the Muntu is a manifestation of the image of the invisible God. In the Bakongo tradition, the original first person on earth was named Mahungu. From the root Vunga. Or Hunga and means to blow or whistle, like the wind. When the wind blows gently, it can be creative, eh? fresh, peace, tranquility. When it becomes violently, it can be destructive. Mahungu is the person who contains two opposing forces, that of creation and that of destruction. His force is therefore creative destructive because it is the sign of strength and weakness. As this person possesses both the masculine and the feminine nature, the person who gives life by his gentleness and who destroys by his violence is a Mahungu. In the traditional conception of the Bakongo, the first man was neither man nor woman. He carried within him two creatures, the female and the male creature. This state of being, both male and female, is called Kimuzungu or Muzungu or Luzungu. Such a dual nature person is called Kwa Muzungu or Kwa Luzungu. That is to say, the one which possesses at the same time two opposing forces. He was called Muntu Valungu, a wholly complete being to whom Nzambi entrusted the management of the whole creation. An immortal and very powerful being possessing godlike attributes, able to create and destroy. But it was the will of Nzambi to make him to be another god self. Mahungu lived in perfect harmony with heaven. At the time of creation, heaven and earth were joined together. They shared one unified space and reality. Mahungu was ordained the custodian of the earth and acted as its high priest and king. In his communion, he interacted with heavenly beings and other earthly creatures. As the custodian of the earth, Ntoto, he ruled the cosmos in accordance with celestial mandate. 
He is not the owner of the earth, but its inheritor. As high priest, he had divine authority to command even spirits. Being a partaker of the council of the mighty ones, he had a place on the high mountain of the gods. To organize his principality, he received a threefold wisdom. One, spirituality as a way to enlighten his mind. Two, scientific wisdom to invent and create. Three, political wisdom to govern and organize his domain. This threefold wisdom endued Mahungu with all the qualities he needed to prosper and expand. Among the Bakongo, these three pillars are called Nsaku, Panzu, and Zinga. It is said that the mother prepares the fufu for the family to eat. As a chief mfumu, one must manifest masculine character to exhort and feminine gentleness. As a nurse, cherished her children yes uh, from first let's read this uh, biblical reference to give you some foundation um, okay let's open another tab Okay, now these are the words of Paul. Okay, the words of Paul in First Thessalonians 2. What was it? 5? I forgot. 7. Okay. Now, let's start from, from 6. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle, okay? We were gentle among you. We were gentle among you. Even as a nurse cherished her children, you see? So the Apostle Paul, as a leader, apostolic leader, compared himself with the gentleness of a mother. That's why in the Congo Bantu culture, a great leader is also a mother. Yeah, so a great leader is also called mama. Hmm? Funny. Eh? Now let's continue. So the word mahungu is constructed of three syllables. Ma, hu, and ngu. Ma can be used in the Congo language to refer to a chief. The final syllable is the root for the Kikongo word ngudi, which means mother. Now this gives the notion that a chief is seen as a nourisher. The Greek word trepo, which is used in the biblical verse given above, is basically defined as to feed, fatten, bring up and nourish coming from the base of a trophy, a turning of the heavenly bodies. Interesting. Now, scripture tells us that the celestial father and mother feeds, that's to say, nourish his children and nature itself. Because in the Bukongo, um, nah, we, we, you will see. Let, let us just read, okay? I will comment later. In his creation, Mahungu had both masculine and feminine attributes in him, a complete being in his divine nature. After his creation, he was stationed in the garden to work and guard it. The Hebrew word for work, abad, denotes service and labor. The term is associated with the Levitical service and to one who performs an act of worship. The Kikongo word mbadi conveys the same concept. In the understanding of this priestly concept, we see the original man, Muntu Valunga, emerging as the first king priest on the earth, serving the Most High in the Garden of Eden. He became the emissary son, the ambassador of heaven, the king of earth. As the great priest, he was complete, and the fullness of divinity dwelt in him which is the manifestation of the 
perfect image and likeness of God. This fullness dwells potentially in every Muntu. And according to scripture, all saints can regain this fullness and become a manifest sons and daughters of the Most High. Yes, according to uh, scripture reference John 1, 16. Okay, let's uh, go there and read it. First one. Oh, 12 I said 16 first one 12 but as many as received him to them gave he power okay? power is ability okay? gave power ability to become manifest sons of God even to them that believed on his name now to become denote what a process of growth okay? so you are a creation of God you know but you can grow when apply the power the ability given to you you can grow to become a manifest child see we are all children of God but not all are manifest children of God walking in his divine power completeness divine completeness uh, also Ephesians 3:18. Yes, let's go there and read 3.18. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes, that ye may be filled with all the fullness of God. So there you have your biblical reference. The Hebrew word translated as to keep in Genesis 2 is Samar. A strong definition to God, to keep and observe. To God in a protective sense as a watchman, to observe, celebrate. Sabbath covenant or command, which is the commandment. So the original moon was a priestly king in Kachiopa. That's the land of Kush, Ethiopia in the Bible, mentioned in Genesis 2, which is the geographical location of the garden according to scripture. He was stationed in that divine space called Eden to perform priestly deity, duties and to guard it as his heritage and to keep the covenant and command. According to Bantu tradition, one can only become a chief through coronation and initiation. And we are called a royal priesthood, you know, for a reason. Now, the mystery of Mahungu. The original man as Mahungu, the complete being, was God himself. This state of a complete being contains the two human natures, feminine and masculine characteristics. It constitutes the dualism that characterizes it. Mahungu is blessed with great weakness and great strength, both the positive and the negative. His weakness predisposes predispose, him to mistakes while his strength raises him in wisdom, in intelligence, and generally in thought in its purity. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, him, okay, him, here is Mahungu. Let me make it. Okay, him is Mahungu, okay, male, yes, him, male and female created he, them, okay, that's the nature of Mahungu, that's the nature, let me say that again, that's the nature of Mahungu in uh, the tradition of the Bakongo. 
So male and female created he them. That's the nature of Mahungu, the nature of completeness. Yes, completeness. Remember, he created men in his own image. Okay? So, men in the image of God. Nzambi ampungu tulendu. Is not male. You know? Nzambi ampungu tulendu. Does not mean that God is a male, like human being. God, Nzambi ampungu tulendu, is complete in himself. Yes, he is complete in himself. We say he. Uh, but Nzamba Pungutulendu, uh, he has, in his creative character, yes, in the creative character, he's a mother. Nzambi, Nzambi is a mother. Pause. <laughs> so, in the creative character or in the creative expression or act, Nzambi is a mother, right? In the destructive act, Nzambi is a father. That's how it's understood. So Mahungu, being male and female, alludes to the feminine and masculine characteristics in that being called Mahungu, in the complete person. Now, the left side among the Bakongu is called the feminine side. Yeah, uh, the side, the female side or feminine side. So that's the side of weakness, you know. The right side is called the masculine side, the male side, which is the side of strength. See? So the left side is the side of nourishment, which corresponds with woman, feminine. The right side is the, the side of power, strength, bravery, yeah, which is masculine. So the male and female mentioned in the Bible allude to the nature of Mahungu, the state of completeness, the complete image of God with the inherent nature to create or destroy, to plant or to uproot. Mahungu enjoyed his life in Eden, which is Kongo Kachiopa. Ingeta. Let me stop there for a moment. Uh, I'm going a bit fast, but you can always rewind and um, rewatch. <laughs> yes. Uh, let your present know in the chat if you're watching, if you're enjoying, you know, if you're loving the knowledge, the revelation. The mystery unveiled, revealed, unveiled and revealed. <clears throat> Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Share, invite some people to join us, share this message. Uh, also visit my Patreon page. I have, and what I'm sharing now will also be later available on my Patreon. Ingeta, yeah, so go there, check it out. Um, also, we are organizing a trip. Yes, we are organizing a trip to Angola. Okay, we are organizing a trip to Angola. And uh, it will be on February 19 to 28. So, 10 days, 9 nights next year 2024 20, you know make sure to be there join me okay let's meet uh, now we will have some business uh, meetings 
over there we will have uh, of course uh, exploration relaxation in <clears throat> in angola the prices are on your screen no you're coming alone or with your spouse prices are there for couples there is a 10 percent discount yes accommodation is 10 days nine nines um, program is as follow cultural excursion field trip investment meeting real estate land purchase city exploration musulu island free exploration and entertainment Kembo. Yeah, so join me to a Angola. It will be a beautiful, beautiful experience yeah, and um, also opportunity to get to know Angola and uh, the opportunities uh, in regards investments. What you can invest. Angola is open for business. Africa is the future. Yes. For more information, uh, or a consultation just uh, send me a mail to angola investment group at gmail.com okay Kimbo. so i hope to see you there <clears throat> okay okay now Fukiao writes the following about the separation of Mahungu yes, into two opposite beings. Now, as you have seen, Mahungu, as you understand now, if you have paid any attention, Mahungu was a complete being by himself. In his nature, he had the feminine and masculine characteristics or natures in himself as one complete being. That's the uh, Congo tradition, okay? Um, the mystery of Mahungu. Now, from European perspective and interpretation, we are told that they were created as separate beings. Yes. Now, Mahungu was one complete being in himself. But something happened. Something happened that separated those two principles, those true forces. Yes. Opposing forces. Something happened during his life that those two forces separated and they became two separate separate beings. Now, look at this. Now, according to the conception of the Bakongo ancestors, the separation of Mahungu into two parts is the origin of man and woman. Okay? Two people, different sexes, male and female previously mahungu was in joy in complete happiness he felt no pain he was unaware of jealousy and hatred he was complete in everything and for everything in the vicinity where mahungu lived a tree sprouted called mutimpungu the tree of completeness or ba bianzambi the tree of God. This tree played a special role at the time of the creation of man in the sense that it was endued with a mysterious force. It was at the base of the separation of Mahungu into two people of different sexes. Its mysterious nature meant that nothing could approach it. When Mahungu pushed by the weak spirit, a feminine force, approached this tree and read around it to try to see and discover something. As soon as he got around, as soon as he got around it, Mahungu split in two. 
This is how men and women were created, according to the Bukongo. Yes. Now, the latter, realizing that they no longer constituted an entity, were seized with concern and regret, having lost the state of complete man. Now, the state of complete man is called Mahungu. Yeah? That is the fullness or the completeness. Now, Lumbu, men, looking at himself, regretted having lost his feminine characteristics. Similarly, Muzita, woman, regretted the masculine characteristics she lacked. They decided to marry it to marry to marry each other. I think it's a, it's a wrong spelling, eh? To marry each other. Yes, to resolve the separation to the union of marriage after thinking they decided to go around the tree of God by following the first route in the opposite direction. The first roundabout finished. They found themselves still separated, woman and man. From that moment, the two searched for each other. The woman sought the man for he is of her parts, and the man sought the woman. In this mutual search, man desired to reunite and restore his original pure state. Okay? Now, he sought to reunite... Uh, but when you go with the biblical narrative, uh, we are told that Adam was put to sleep. Okay. The Lord God took man. Yes. He took man. He put him to sleep. And he took his rib. Yeah, one of his rib. And made woman. And then we are told, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. Now, according to the Bukongo taught, right, the mystery of Mahungu, marriage was a necessity because of the separation of the original complete being called Mahungu. Because they went against the commandment of God. Because in the mystery, um, mystery we are told that they were forbidden to go around the sacred tree. Now, pushed by the weak side, the feminine force, Mahungu went in curiosity around the tree and poof, they were separated. Okay? Now, now they were looking... They were in search for a solution. Now, the man reflects deeply. And finally, he arrived at the solution of marriage. That is to say, the union according to the, to the agreement of two people, man and woman, to become one and, and complement each other. Because both came to understand that a life separated would lead them to devastation. Both understood that they needed each other. The one who will never be the one will never be complete whole without the other. The contribution of such is a direct function of the dominant qualities inherited from the total, the complete man that was Mahungu. This is how man identifies with force and finds himself naturally inclined towards what is reminiscent of violence, war, destruction, hunting. In short, man is characterized by bravery, impulsiveness, while the woman identifies with gentlemen, uh, symbolizes calm, sensitivity, fear, in front of terrifying creatures. Now, the differentiation of two sexes brought them to know each other. Yes, uh, Koyebana, eh? Koyebana in Kikongo, 
Lingala, to know each other. Yeah, as we read in Genesis 4, verse 1. Now, now they are separated and they decided to marry each other. Okay, they decided to marry each other and now um, the two sexes brought them to know each other. <clears throat> Koyebana, which uh, sexual intercourse, right? Intimacy. And Adam knew his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Ingeta, <clears throat> and she bare again, and again she knew, or Adam knew his wife again, and gave birth to Abel. And so Adam knew his wife, it's a terminology to say they had intercourse, there was action, there was something going on. Ingeta, huh? so the woman conceived and gave birth. See? It's a band tradition. The woman called her husband Lumi, which means semen secretor. And the man called his wife Mbuti. Mbuti means the one who gives birth. Yes, Mbuti. Because it is she who produces children. And Ndimba, she who bears boys and girls. Now, in this stage of marriage, the human being felt as if he had regained the pure state he had lost after bypassing the tree of God. And she discovered uh, there an easy way to also multiply his species. Okay. Now, the myth of Mahungu tells us actually Am I within time? Oh, yes. See, I am within time. Now, the myth of Mahungu informs us that in the beginning, when God or the Elohim the, decided to create men, Muntu, they created a being who was complete in itself because that being was the manifestation of God. So in 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 in, in, in Congo, eh, among the Bakongo, there is a proverb that says, "Nzambi is another kind of a muntu." See, so we are the image of the invisible God. Yes, yeah, so muntu. And the complete Ubuntu, the fullness, as we are told, that we must strive to regain that fullness, right? Now, that fullness of being a complete being is gained, first of all, through marriage. Yes, when you marry. You complete yourself, you complete each other, yes? You regain, in a natural sense, uh, that fullness of Mahungu. Second, there is a fullness of Mahungu, which is called Ki Mahungu, which is gained through initiation. Okay? That's the spiritual fullness, which the Bible alludes to. Yes, in, um, what was it, Ephesians 3, yes, um, first, what was the first? I forgot the first, but in Ephesians 3, we are told, uh, 19, uh, Ephesians 3, 19, and to know the love of Christ with past, past knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Yes? Now, knowledge deals with esoteric knowledge. Knowledge there deals with esoteric knowledge. In the Greek, ginosko, 
uh, the G and K are interchangeable, so Ginosko can be Kinosko, which is actually the Kikongo um, Kindoki. Yes, and Kindoki is the practice of esoteric knowledge, hidden knowledge. Yes, uh, so we have two ways. First of all, naturally, we regain fullness through marriage. That's the natural way. But we also must work for uh, to regain the spiritual uh, completeness, eh? kimahungu, through knowledge. Yes, true knowledge. That knowledge, as we can see here, in the Greek, ginosko, kinosko, in the Kikongo, kindoki. Now, kindoki uh, is not devilish, because if you are from Congo, many will say kindoki is witchcraft, uh, don't mess with it, I have nothing to do with it. But kindoki, ndoki, Kindoki is uh, the practice of divine knowledge or hidden knowledge or esoteric knowledge. Yes, there is no evil there. But knowledge can be used for good or bad. Another interesting fact, when we are dealing with Mahungu, we see that the masculine side, yeah, that's the right side, because uh, among the Bakongu, every person has a feminine and masculine side. So the left side of a moon to of a person is called the feminine side, right? The right side of a moon to a person is called the masculine side. So when you observe the image on your screen of Mahungu, you will see on the right side that uh, the masculine is represented by the sun. Okay? By the sun. The feminine is represented by the moon. See? So, the sun is connected with the power of God. The masculine energy, whilst the moon is represented with God, the feminine energy in Geta, you see. So, in the Bible, the Most High is both connected with the sun, Right, because he sh he's, he's let let his let his face shine upon you. Uh, now the shine is actually as the shining of the sun, etc. Um, but we also see the moon having a place in the Hebrew tradition, right? As um, the full moon and yeah, the blowing of the trumpets, etc. So both are there in the Hebrew tradition, in the Congo tradition. We see the sun, we also see the moon. Okay. So when you go to into Christianity, you also see the sun uh, as a solar disk behind prophets, yes, behind saints, you know, behind the heads. Which represents the, 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 the masculine energy of God. And when you look into Islam, you see the crescent moon, right? Crescent moon, which is actually a different side of that one full being. Yeah? The full being, which is called Nzambi Ampungu. <laughs> that full being as a feminine side in creation, masculine side in judgment and destruction, according to the Congo 
tradition. All right. 40 minutes. In Geta. So I'm gonna be careful. Uh, I know it was um, a fast lesson. I went very fast. Uh, but you can always rewatch to get the complete understanding. Uh, if there are any questions, you can also email me. Um, you can also join my Samba classes that we have uh, on Saturdays. Email me if you're interested. And of course, don't forget to check out my Patreon page. I also have additional teachings over there. Patreon page, which are not available on YouTube. Okay, so go there and uh, support me on Patreon. So, now that's it, people. Um, if you're new to the channel, support me, you know. Subscribe, doesn't cost you anything, it's totally free. Give this video a thumbs up and share with your family members and friends. Ingeta, and don't forget to, uh, if you're interested, of course, you know, join me with the Angola trip and let's explore Angola together. Beautiful country. A lot of opportunities there for investment uh, people who want to you know have something going on in africa it's interesting to come with me and to see for yourself yeah, the potential of africa in this case angola all right blessed uh, people matondo kembo natatanzambi beluka yina hisaya kongo Blessed is he who comes in the name of Congo. I see you next time in Geta.